It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman. I'd like to welcome back to the show to talk about another children's book that's going to help teach our children some prayers. Katie Warner, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me back on the show, Kyle. It's always great to be with you. Yeah, we got another Meg and Katie collaboration here. We do. And this one, I give all credit to Meg because in our newest book, Let Us Pray, she just did such a knockout job with all the illustrations. And I just grabbed some of the most beautiful prayers of the church to put inside. So yeah, it's yeah. really, this, this book is really a tribute to her beautiful artistry. Yeah. Not a whole lot of, I guess, creative writing so much as just collecting some of the, the common Catholic prayers. Do you have a favorite memorized prayer? Oh my goodness. Well, I would say the one that I say most frequently is the Memorari. So maybe it's my favorite in that it's my most spoken prayer throughout every day. Um, but I do have another prayer that I like um, that is from one of Father Michael Gately's devotionals. Um, hmm. That's just Mary Lend Me Your Heart. And I use that one a lot every day too, especially in moments of kind of chaos or frustration with the kids. This is, I, I feel like it's a very relevant prayer for a mother's life, a mother's busy life. It's to ask Mary, Mary, lend me your heart, you know, just that, that heart of patience and virtue and love. But um, a lot of the prayers in our book, Let Us Pray, I would say are, are my favorites and that I've been saying them my whole life. And I want my children to really come to know and love these prayers too. How does that Mary, lend me your heart prayer go? Mary, lend me your heart. Oh. <laughs> That's it. It's that simple. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I, I can remember that. Good. I know, right? I, I should have put that in the book. It's really short and simple. But no, our this this book, Let Us Pray, A Child's First Book of Prayers, we really wanted to include some of the most common, most beautiful prayers of the church and the ones that are most often prayed in family life so that our kids could kind of come to know and learn those by heart and also just have a collection of beautiful illustrations to kind of make almost a devotional experience for them as they learn their prayers. Well, and I would love to say that I've gotten a chance to look at the book, but Andrea took it home to read to her child and, and now it's stuck there. So, uh, <laughs> you might never see it then. <laughs> right, right. So you've got the endorsement of at least one child here, but how That's do you great. explain to your children what prayer is? So I think with little kids, the you know it's it's really more about learning to pray by praying. So I can talk to my kids about prayer being a conversation with God, or you know prayer you know being a way to talk to God, to grow in relationship with Him, to come to know Him and love Him, and have Him come to know Him, love you even more. Um, but I really think that for little ones, prayer is best understood by them by actually praying, mm. by praying with their parents, seeing their parents pray, just kind of being immersed in the experience of prayer as a very habitual part of their everyday lives. And then they come to understand what prayer is by actually practicing that relationship, that conversation um, to the point where it becomes like breathing. Um, I Someone asked me, you know, if I could talk about, you know, my experiences first learning to pray with my parents, you know, that first time they taught me the Hail Mary and our Father. And I thought, I don't think I can remember that at all. And he had a, he had a wonderful, you know, memory of the exact spot in the home where he grew up in, where he learned the Hail Mary for the first time. And I was one, amazed by his memory, but then two, realized, I think that it really, that these prayers, that our Father, the Hail Mary, all the prayers, the rosary, the grace before meals, the memory have been such a regular part of my life for so long that it really, has really become like breathing, where I can't even remember the origin of it. It's just something that I always did. And I wanted that experience for my kids too, where prayer was just so interwoven into their lives that it feels like it never really has a beginning or an end. It's just part of who they are. Well, whenever you describe prayer as a conversation, I feel like that is almost in conflict with the concept of a memorized prayer where it's just me reciting something that somebody else wrote and it really doesn't have that idea of communication. It's not necessarily expressing my thoughts of the moment, my intentions at the moment, and there's no kind of listening component to it where, you know, like a spontaneous prayer where we're giving our intentions and we're talking to God and then maybe having some time of silence of listening to God. That seems more like a conversation. Why do you think that these memorized prayers are still important? That is a really good point, Kyle. You know, I think for young children, it doesn't come extremely natural to them, you know, these beings who are just very tangible and visceral and like 
the we are especially up you know through age six you know um the the Montessori method actually even um you know Maria Montessori would teach that you should even kind of try and stick mostly with nonfiction during those early years and the reason why she taught that is because young children just kind of see in reality as it is so this hmm. kind of more meditative contemplative prayer that is. Uh, you know, a bit out of reach for the average young child because it seems so intangible, so mysterious, something they can't see and grasp. So I think these kind of rote prayers are especially good for young children because this is the age where, you know, they can, they memorize like little sponges. So it's a perfect time to be teaching them these prayers um, where they already kind of have that natural capacity to pick up words so quickly, to memorize so quickly, and then to be able to have a way to talk to God until they feel comfortable being able to, like you said, kind of come up with those concerns that are on their heart. I mean, our kids don't have a lot of concerns that are on their heart. And if they do, that you know, the, our three-year-old might be on the floor throwing a fit about it and having a hard time asking Jesus right. for help. So, you know, those are a great opportunity, you know, instead of being, oh, think of what you want to tell Jesus right now, you know, to be, sometimes I'll just grab my kind of, you know, my, my child who's in that moment of intense emotion and sit them on my lap and we say, hell Mary. And there's mm-hmm. something about those words that they know um, that they could memorize that, that are tangible to them in some way, because we also talk about what the prayer means, that they can join me in that prayer and calm down. If they had to kind of come up with their own words, I don't know if they would be able to easily do that yet, nor have they developed that capacity, even though we work on that regularly through silent time every day, to really listen to God speaking to them. So these prayers are also a good way to show us how God loves us, how Mary can help us, and 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 kind of give them that tangible reality to work with until they can grow into that capacity for more meditative and contemplative prayer. And I imagine a lot of this is starting from infancy, like you're praying with your child or you're, you're reading these books to them or whatever. At what point do you think it's actually becomes teaching rather than just modeling prayer? Right. So I think that it kind of naturally progresses, like your, your child almost asks, for it. That's one of the things that I've realized with my son is that I take advantage of opportunities to just teach him of my own free choice, but a lot of his learning comes entirely from inside of him. He just, he'll, he'll have questions. He'll just want to know. When we read the Bible together, for example, um, it's very rare that I could read a whole story without having to pause every few lines while he asks me questions about the story. Whereas my three-year-old is more likely to just sit and listen. My five-year-old is more likely to stop me constantly to ask me questions. And I mean, it's such a part for, for us, the Bible time is such a part of our regular lives that the questions that I get from him to me are ones that, you know, I think some adults wouldn't think to ask. I, just this is an example. The other day he wanted to know, you know, if, you know, if Mary is without sin, when she found Jesus in the temple, she schooled at him. Isn't that like, isn't that wrong? Because, mm you know, she was scolding Jesus for doing God's will. And I thought, oh my goodness, like my five-year-old is making this amazing connection. I really think that children kind of have that natural capacity to learn and to want to get that knowledge. So for us, that teaching, you know, if we sit down with a book like Let Us Pray, so while my, you know, while my younger children are still learning the words of these prayers, my older son is coming in and looking at the illustrations and asking me questions about you know, why the angel Gabriel is handing the Blessed Mother a lily and, Mm. you know, talking about the symbol of the dove and, you know, and how that represents the Holy Spirit in the the illustration. And just there's so many, so much rich meaning in particular to the illustrations that Meg's put in this book that it instigates so many questions and so much further learning from him that I I could decide to sit one day down one day and just teach him those things myself. But it's amazing how much young children just naturally will come to ask those questions and desire it themselves, especially if you present those opportunities. As long as you're sitting down with them with a book, as long as you're coming to prayer, as long as you're spending time in the Bible, they're going to naturally want to know more. And and that curiosity was planted in them by God in the first place. And it's just beautiful to watch it grow. I like it. We're talking about the book, Let Us Pray, A Child's First Book of Prayers with Katie Warner. Are there any mistakes that you see or you've made yourself in trying to share prayers or teach prayers to your kids or, or things that uh, just don't seem to work with kids that you might assume because they work with adults? 
Right. Yeah. I would say for me, I could fall into rigidity. Like I, I, you know, I can get easily frustrated when there's a lot of chaos during prayer and just, <laughs> I want everyone to be quiet and sitting still, which is completely ridiculous for the right. age of my children. And so I really do think that for a lot of us, it's just a matter of having appropriate age and developmental expectations. Like yeah. we're really all about planting seeds here and we're not going to have contemplative saints overnight, you know, like these holy, you know, levitating children. <laughs> I mean, it's very normal for them to be active during prayer. One thing that, you know, my husband and I have been trying to do is better understand and care to our children's own learning style. So my son is an auditory learner. My um, oldest daughter is a visual learner. So my daughter during prayer, it's really helpful if she has a book in front of her or artwork to look at. Whereas my son he pray for him like he wants he wants a very auditory experience so he's more likely to participate in vocalizing the prayer he also loves to listen to the bible um versus necessarily reading it and so um kind of catering to those things during prayer helps you having your kids have something to hold my children love to hold little saint dolls and sometimes even quietly play with them while we're praying or to hold a rosary rather than just say a rosary some of those things you know you can do during prayer to kind of really just respect the age and development of your young children. So I think, and then I think the other extreme that I don't struggle with, but sometimes wish I had more of that in me is the laxity. You also don't want to be on the other end where you're just lazy and making prayer a part of your day. You know, Mm -hmm. if, if that is a problem you struggle with, then attach family prayer to things that are happening every day. So um, obviously grace before meals is a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, But also if you're in the car every day at the same time, Play in the car together. Um, when you go to bed at night, if you're all together, you know, doing tuck-in experiences or even separately, make sure you're praying before you go to bed. Attach prayer to those everyday habitual activities until that becomes just a natural part of that part of the day as well. Yeah. One of the things I think that have helped us with that is like you say, like a trigger that like every time you do this, then you say a prayer. So one of the things we pass a water tower on our way into school and church. And so anytime we pass that water tower, that's our cue to say a prayer on our way to school or church, or if we're just in, in town for something. And otherwise, like we don't say a prayer on our way to the grocery store because we don't go past the water tower, you know? So <laughs> the more of those things that we have in our day of like, Oh, when this happens, I say a prayer. I think then it starts to become more of a natural habit that it's something we do more Absolutely. than just before a meal or before bed and incorporating that with our kids, I think is important. What exactly. are the... Well, everybody's the, going to be looking for water towers today. Yeah. <laughs> <around> <laughs> go. Yeah. It could be a McDonald's. It could be anything. Anything could be a cause of prayer. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the prayers that are in the book? Okay. So we start with the prayers of the rosary because um, hopefully if, you know, if as a family you're not praying the rosary together, this can be a good way to start by just learning separately the prayers of the Holy Rosary. So the Apostles' Creed, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, the Glory Be, the Fatima Prayer. Once kids have learned those prayers, praying the rosary together as a family isn't that daunting, especially a decade of the rosary. Maybe a whole rosary, yes, that can be daunting, especially with little children. Mm-hmm. But as a family, we can easily pray a decade. And the kids know all the prayers of that decade thanks to having resources like this where they can learn those prayers individually along with these beautiful pictures next to them. And then also we included some of the other prayers that are um, just, just really common in Catholic life. So the Guardian Angel Prayer, the St. Michael Prayer, which I feel like is kids just love that one because it's kind of like a call to battle, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially little boys. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so important in our culture today, um, as well as the memorari, grace before meals, and then a few other ones that um, we believe are just really good to have in the arsenal of a young Catholic. All right. Again, the book is called Let Us Pray, A Child's First Book of Prayers. It's available from Tan Books. You can find it anywhere online and uh, just a great little board book for your kids. Thank you so much, Katie Warder. Appreciate it. Thanks again, Kyle. Hope to talk to you soon.